Hello there. My name is Simon, and you've caught me on the set of the music video for I Let Love In, Cut A Rug, which is going to be the first single on my record, Hum, which I will be releasing at the Minneapolis Uptime VFW on Thursday, June 8th. Not without a heartbreak, not without a career. Once there was a time when I wouldn't shed a tear. But then I decided to let love in. I let my guard down and then I shut my skin. And then it's day after day. I miss my mind. Shit, that's a Ivy and Poison Ivy are going to open for a show at the VFW on June 8th, which happens to be the record release of someone called Dr. Simon R. Calder. Why is he calling himself a doctor? <laughs> What's going on? So I slipped away and danced, took my ideas in the dark, until I could speak my mind by telling all my heart. I helped repair the house that is falling to ruin, by building enough space for its very many. Dr. Simon R. Calder here, reviewing the thesis summary of my doctoral thesis, which as you can see, I completed in 2010. It was called More Sure Than Shifting Theory, George Eliot's Ethics of Fiction Making. Now, I found myself returning to this when I was stuck in England during the global pandemic. And that was when I began working on the book, Her Hummingbird Heart, which spawned the record Hump. With my still wet and dripping from my dancing shoes, oh my god, I feel different, oh my god, I feel new, oh my god, I feel at home in my unshed skin, eternally surprised that love let me in. 2010 was, on the surface of it, quite an inopportune time for Dr. Simon R. Calder to complete his thesis on George Eliot's ethics of fiction making. The economic crisis was affecting higher education in the States and in England, so rather to his surprise, he found himself teaching as an adjunct lecturer in the Department of Communication Studies at the University of Minnesota which wound up suiting Dr. Calder rather well, in fact. Before he hit the Twin Cities, he didn't know that much about it. He knew Mary Tyler Moore, he knew profane existence, he knew that Minneapolis was where Prince was from, of course, and where First Avenue was. And so upon arriving here to teach at the university as an adjunct lecturer, he found himself having enough spare time to begin to explore some open mics, meet some other musicians. Before too long, he formed a band. The band was called Infinities, and they made a record, Infinite Infinities. By 2015, when Dr. Calder was making this record with his new band, Infinities, he was really beginning to enjoy himself quite a bit. It was fun to make a full record with a whole CD sleeve like this, working with some really excellent other musicians. He'd missed being in a band. He had to take a little bit of a break from it to do his scholarly stuff, as though he had made a George Eliot-themed record when he was doing the PhD on George Eliot, uh, which was called Rivers of No Great Name, referencing the end of Middlemarch by George Eliot. And the band was called The New Teresas, also referencing George Eliot in his really Dr. Caldery way. All kinds of unexpected surprises resulted from making this record, including getting to perform at First Avenue's Cemetery Entry, for example, and also being invited to be a guest co-host on Cyanet Radio's music show as the frontman of Infinities. 
Because Simon did such an unusual amount of scholarly research on the handful of musicians that he interviewed, he was offered a show and transformed into Simon Calder, the host of Back to the City. Between its genesis in 2015 and the present day, 2023, many hundreds of long-form Minneapolis music conversations have been conducted on the Back to the City show, which in its present manifestation is a TV show filmed somewhere over there in Northeast Minneapolis at the MCN6 TV station. Here's Simon arriving to film this week's episode with the musician, Sarah Morris. Now this particular Back to the City guest, Sarah Morris, is actually the central case study in Dr. Simon R. Calder's forthcoming book, Her Hummingbird Heart. The interview that Simon is presently preparing to conduct with Sarah is actually the fourth Back to the City interview that the two of them have conducted. The two books that are central to Her Hummingbird Heart, in turn, are The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron and The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown, both of which were referenced by Sarah in her first interview with Simon Calder, host of Back to the City, in the Sign Out Radio studio back in 2015. In that very early Back to the City interview, Sarah referred to this book, The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown, as having inspired her to join a songwriting challenge. Sarah also referenced this book, The Artist's Way, which is also a course in harnessing creativity. Julia Cameron guides participants in The Artist's Way course through 12 weeks of activities designed to help them reconnect with their inner child and become more creative. Now, as Sarah was talking about these two books to Simon back in 2015, he suddenly remembered that he was Dr. Calder because lots of the things that Sarah was saying about attention as an ethical ability and about the significance of storytelling were exactly the kind of thing that Dr. Simon R. Calder had been writing about in More Short and Shifting Theory, George Eliot's Ethics of Fiction Making. Immediately before the pandemic hit, Simon was working as a barista in Common Roots Cafe, as well as still working full-time as an adjunct lecturer at the University of Minnesota. Now Simon's working at Common Roots to make a little bit of extra money so that he doesn't have to monetize the Banks of the City TV show. And one morning, he's doing the opening shift and another Minneapolis music writer, Andrea Swenson, comes in to buy some breakfast. By this point, Simon had decided that he wanted to take a little bit of a break from higher education to focus on writing the book that would integrate the Bank to the City focus and his old scholarly work. And he explained that to Andrea, who promptly recommended The Artist's Way. So it was that this particular copy of The Artist's Way worked its way into Simon's hands immediately before the global pandemic hit. He already had a plan to visit his parents in England for two months, wound up getting stuck there for 18 months with this book. During his period of being stuck in England, Simon continued conducting the Back to the City interviews through the medium of Zoom. And one of those interviews was with Sarah Morris. The Zoom interview with Sarah concerned Between Here and There, a record that she put out in 2020. And there was a recurring focus on trust and faith in the record. In the Zoom interview, Simon asked Sarah about the theme of trust in the new record. And unprompted, she highlighted two books that had had a big influence on her and her songwriting practices were The Artist's Way and Big Magic. It was in that moment that a very excited Simon realized that Sarah Morris would be an excellent case study in a book on how to harness ordinary creativity. Sarah had highlighted this book, The Gifts of Imperfection, as the book that had inspired her to commit to creativity. And in this book, Brene Brown theorizes that there are 10 guideposts to wholehearted living. So Simon put his doctor called a hat on again and decided to zoom in onto the Back to the City dialogues that have been conducted through the years regarding 10 songs by Sarah Morris 
each of which related to one of these 10 different areas of wholehearted living, according to Brene Brown, the author who had inspired Sarah to commit to creativity in the first place. Simon spent a long period of time going through multiple drafts of the book Her Hummingbird Heart, and he was nearing the end of the process of composing a version of the book, at the heart of which were these 10 chapters relating Brene Brown's theory to Sarah Morris's songs, when Sarah Morris made a post about there being a new summer 2022 round of the songwriting challenge. So Simon decided he couldn't complete the book without conducting the songwriting challenge himself. Simon found himself composing 10 songs in 10 weeks, each of which continued the investigation of one of the 10 areas of wholehearted living that Brene Brown had initially theorized about in The Gifts of Imperfection. Those are the 10 songs on Hum that we'll be celebrating the release of at the Uptown VFW in Minneapolis on June 8th.